A two alarm house fire this morning. We're live in Escondido with the latest. The problem with Obamacare, it's not good. We'd like to terminate it. I think that also health care overall is very much in jeopardy. Two dueling town halls, two very different messages from both presidential candidates. New troubling figures this morning on San Diego's economy when we're predicted to get back on track. We'll dig into all of this. A local and famous musician is performing live here at Belly Up tomorrow to save our stages. This is the crown jewel, you know, so this is the, the model of the stadium. We are getting an inside look at what future game days will look like at the new stadium in Mission Valley. You are up with eight. So a lot to get to here today, but we want to start with that breaking news out of the North County. Firefighters cleaning up here as they try to figure out what caused this house fire. Yeah, News 8's Evan Arani has been live at the scene all morning long. He's in Escondido with the very latest. Good morning, Evan. Good morning, Stella and Eric. That's right. We actually just finished talking with the police or with the fire chief here. He gave us the latest on this house fire. We're in Escondido right now where uh, the chief says that uh, four people made it out of that house early this morning. The call came in just around 240 and everyone is safe as of this morning. It was one adult and three children that were in the home at the time when the fire started up. You can see how most of that damage took place right around the garage area where fire crews are still mopping up right now. And that's been going on for for about three hours now, just over three hours. This is on Via Rancho Parkway right off the 15 freeway. The chief said that when they were making their way up here early this morning, they could see those flames coming from the freeway. And so they knew what direction they were headed. But they did say that it was pretty tough to find the home considering uh, these roads are pretty uh, narrow and uh, it was relatively difficult for some of their crews to get on scene uh, and to know exactly where those flames were coming from. You're seeing some video from earlier this morning when those flames were pretty active. Now fire crews say they are mopping up the scene here and it doesn't look like there are any neighboring structures currently at risk as this home looks to be relatively isolated. Now uh, the chief also told us that the way that they found out about this fire was that the one of the cats in the home, they had several animals, several dogs and cats. One of the cats actually woke up one of the children and that's how they found out about this fire that looks to have begun in the garage. The chief also said that about a third of the home looks to have been destroyed, but the main uh, de the main destruction to this home took place in that garage area. So uh, fire crews do appear to be on scene for a pretty decent amount of time now, and uh, they will likely stay on scene for a couple hours, continuing to mop up uh, what's going on here. But we have been told that the main roads on Via Rancho Parkway have reopened. So uh, what was previously uh, previous backups along Via Rancho Parkway, uh, those roads are now open and the sheriff has uh, opened it for uh, through traffic. Uh, so at this point, just mopping up, still no information as to what caused the fire, uh, but the chief did reiterate that uh, they've responded to uh, an unusual number of garage fires over the last uh, several weeks and months. And so uh, one of the things to keep in mind is that if you have any flammable liquids or anything that can spark a fire in your garage, it is something to uh, check up on as uh, this seems to be a continuing issue in in the area. So we will continue to stay on scene, bring, scene bringing you the latest uh, as it comes. But for now, I'll send things back to you, Stella and Eric. Okay, wow. Wow, the One, cat. The cat woke, woke up the family. Yeah. Wow. Again, Jenny has always been a fan of cats, and now I'm a fan of cats after right? this story. Yeah. Just envision the cat going. <laughs> yeah, get up! Is There's danger. Wrong. So happy to hear that the one adult and the three kids were able to make it out of that fire. Okay, yeah, thank yeah. goodness. Our other top story, of course, our weather. We are getting closer to cooler temps. Happy <laughs> Friday, Netta, by the way. Yay! I know. I feel like I'm not the bearer of bad news as much today uh, because yes, we are basically a day away from a cool down. Today, though, look at this foggy conditions out there right by downtown San Diego. This is the view from the airport and you can kind of see those palm trees some of the lights there on the street but other than that uh, that fog is just hanging right there along the embarcaderos but as you see mount woodson towards the east nice clear conditions in fact you can see that early glow and there is venus right there sunrise is at 6 54 this morning here's a view from mount soledad as well so the higher up you go you can actually see a little bit better one to two miles from the beach that's where the patchy fog is lowering that visibility ib that seems to be a trouble spot this morning. It's uh, pretty foggy for you guys there. Santa Ana winds have arrived for our mountains and foothills. Not seeing too strong of these wind gusts. 20 miles per hour looking to be the strongest in places like Mount Laguna right now. It is drying us out. It is going to bring us those hot temperatures uh, for today before we start to see a big change in our weather pattern. We will start to see cooler temperatures. Hey Jenny.
Cat lover right there. There you go. Can we be like really, really honest with ourselves? That cat was hungry and wanted food and was just like, you know what I mean? They're like, my bowl is only half full. I'm starving humans. Oh, by the way, there's also a fire. Uh, it is 6.05. Happy Friday to you if you're just waking up. Traffic is really quiet. I don't think anybody's driving this morning. There were only a few cars when I drove in at about 5. Travel times to the north are fine. No major crashes reported. There is, there are, I should say, reports of a crash on the westbound side of the 8 at Taylor, right at Hotel Circle. Um, potentially maybe the shoulder block, but I'm not seeing any delays. Coronado Bridge, a little bit of volume right at the end, but that's not bad. Back to you. Instead of a second debate, President Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden held dueling town halls. Did you watch them? It was kind of difficult. I was going back and forth. The coronavirus is the biggest topic of the night with the cases surging in much of the, count the country. President Trump says the pandemic is almost over. In a separate event, former Vice President Joe Biden said President Trump hasn't taken the virus seriously and that it's his job as the president to, to lead the nation. It is a presidential responsibility to lead. And he didn't do that. He didn't talk about what needed to be done because he kept worrying, in my view, about the stock market. I really felt good. I didn't have much of a problem with the lungs. I did have a little bit of a temperature. Obviously, I felt there was something missing. And then I tested, you know, I tested positive. Well, so it is possible voters may see the two presidential candidates face off on the debate stage one more time before the election. If so, it will take place as planned on October 22nd. And the race for the 50th Congressional District is in the national spotlight this morning. Yeah, President Trump has now endorsed 50th Congressional District candidate Daryl Issa. In a tweet sent before 3.30 this morning our time, President Trump slammed Congressional candidate Amar Campanajar and endorsed his Republican opponent, Issa. In it, the president called Campanajar a, quote, puppet for House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, end quote, and criticized him for his stance on gun rights, veteran support, and taxes. I just tweeted it out if you want to head to my Twitter. We are waiting, though, for a response from Campa Najjar's campaign. The Trump administration has rejected California's request for disaster assistance in the wake of six recent destructive wildfires, including the Valley Fire here in San Diego. In a letter dated September 28th, Governor Gavin Newsom estimated the financial impact at $229 million and asked the president for a disaster declaration to free up funding. It's not clear yet why the request was denied. The state is expected to appeal. And now to the very latest on the coronavirus cases in our county. Officials are reporting a drop in new cases. 143 new cases and three new deaths were reported yesterday. However, 17 additional outbreaks were reported. 2% of the latest tests were positive. San Diego's two-week average positivity rate is at 3%. Our case rate is at 6.5, keeping us in the state's red tier for now. And this morning, students at Steel Canyon High School are holding a student rally on Zoom to call for a return of in-person classes as well as their sports. They say it does not seem logical or rational to keep students out of school and athletes off the field. They say a growing number of student athletes and parents both are anxious and eager to return. Now this Zoom will be held from 8 a.m. until noon. Eric. Okay, I guess I'll take it from here. Today marks the start of a new effort to try and save music venues nationwide, including right here in San Diego. The Save Our Stages Festival. It begins today, and News 8's Teresa Sardina is live at Belly Up Tavern in Solana Beach, where one Grammy Award-winning artist will perform this weekend. Good morning, Teresa. I assume it's closed right now, right? <laughs> Yes, good morning, Stella. It's going to be very exciting. The three-day event kicks off today, and Jason Mraz of Oceanside is performing live here at Belly Up Tavern tomorrow, and News 8 had the chance to speak with him yesterday, so lucky Netta, and he says he is doing everything he can to save this local gem here. So it was so nice to chat with him, and he says through the pandemic, many artists, including himself, are staying connected with fans through virtual tours. Belly Up Tavern in Solana Beach is one of many venues in San Diego that have lost audiences, Mraz says, so we need to save our venues. He says Belly Up is a special venue not only for the artists, but for the community. He teams up with other artists for Save Our Stages, so you can subscribe to stream the concert online. Mraz says this weekend on YouTube, the NEVA, the National Independent Venue Association, is hosting a three-day music festival to save iconic venues around 
around the country, such as the Belly Up Tavern in San Diego. It's part of a three-day weekend virtual festival with a lot of great artists and all the, f the money raised for this fund is going to help uh, keep these venues alive because right now they've really been hurting. Again, it is Save Our Stages, hashtag SOS Fast, and we'll have that information at CBS8.com. So tomorrow he will be performing live at 1 o'clock and 4 o'clock Pacific Standard Time here at the Belly Up Tavern. But we will be rocking out on our couch. So go on and subscribe and donate to Save Our Stages, a very special gym here in San Diego. I'll send it back to you. And Jason Mraz, you know, uh. he loves our city and you just enjoyed having that conversation with him yesterday. Yes, it was such a good conversation just about so many different things. Of course, he's a farmer in Oceanside, but uh, definitely has his studio there on his farm where he writes his songs and then supports these local venues like Belly Up. That's one of many here in town. So many good memories at Belly Up. Soja Live was one of my favorite times to be there and watch them. So if you have any memories, feel free to share them with us. Uh, definitely want to support our stages all across the country they certainly can use that help the staff that works at these places uh, need to keep those jobs so this is their attempt so many artists supporting them here's a live look for you right now from the Bahia and yeah you can see it's foggy out there because you can barely see what's going on there are some uh, boats docked of course right there and then the bay uh, very calm conditions on the water but when it comes to what's right above the water that patchy fog impacting visibility so places like uh, Mission Bay PB La Jolla it's a little foggy in fact you can see that right here uh, Del Mar, 95% relative humidity, showing that there's that fog hanging there. It's also a little misty in some of these spots as well. But totally different story in places like Alpine. That's where it's dry. Your humidity down to 15%. That's also where we're noticing those weak Santa Ana winds coming through this morning. So um, these numbers will continue to drop here over the next few hours as the winds are expected to pick up. They'll stay fairly dry for the mountains and foothills into tomorrow. Overall wind speeds, we just saw them peak in Mount Laguna the Laguna Observatory at 515 at 28 miles per hour. So that's the strongest gust we've seen in our local mountains. Not a huge Santa Ana event, but offshore winds nonetheless will dry things out and bring in some of that desert heat into our area. So we'll see them taper down a bit after around 8 o'clock this morning, looking like it'll peak around 7, 8 a.m. We are still under that heat advisory. It ends at 5 p.m. today. And then as you see to the north, Orange County, uh, L.A. County, Riverside, they have red flag warnings. We also are seeing them throughout the Bay Area as well, but all of that should expire by tonight. That's because we are going to start to see temperatures finally cooling a little bit. And that's a look at your forecast. It's still nice and quiet. I just was stifling a yawn, not because of you, just because, you know, there's not much happening out there. There is one crash that just popped into the system and there it goes. It disappeared. So this was in Santee. So this is great. It was on the 67 northbound right at that exit to Woodside. Single lane was blocked, but that icon is gone, which means the crash is clear. Your drive through Santee is so quiet. Everything up to the north remains quiet. That little delay I saw on the northbound 15 towards the 78 is gone. Everything in the south is fine. Coronado Bridge, barely any volume visible. Back to you. Jenny, thank you. Coming up, new. Uh, next, a new twist this morning in the Scott Peterson case. Plus, one major company is dealing with a fraud scam where small businesses are the victims. Why, it may be an inside job. Then, could flying in an airplane almost be safer than hanging out at home when it comes to catching the coronavirus? We'll take a closer look at this next.